Hello everyone, this is the XF3 3-inch FPV frame from Nidacy or Nidacy. I'm not sure how you say it. I still don't know if they've been around for uh, some time. I think they're primarily an Amazon seller, but I do think they have their own website. But inside this little bag is a frame, so let's get it out and let's put it together. Here are all the pieces that we have, and you can see there's quite a bit of hardware laying over here, but I do think some of these pieces are for mounting our flight stack, so they aren't necessarily components that make the frame. We've got a top plate, we've got a bottom plate, we've got our camera mounting plates. This looks to be a sandwich plate and then we have our four arms. We also have a nice blue FPV branded Velcro battery strap. Kind of like that. It's nice. It's a little bit wide for a 20 by 20 stack but I do think you can get that through there. You can see we also have a grommet that goes in that top hole and that is if you have a traditional VTX with an SMA mount that you need to get through there uh, otherwise you just might use something else and you can omit that. I'm going to go ahead and put it together and then we'll take another look at it. Here's my final assembly state and I say my final assembly state because you kind of have two options. If you have a 3D printed piece that you want to slide over the front standoffs to mount your cameras, you can do that. And in the case if you want to use these extra standoffs right in this location, you have to do that because these camera mounting plates will not fit when you put this secondary set of front standoffs in. When it comes to assembling the arms, uh, I selected to go with this uh, routed out edge up. I saw a picture online of it. That's the only reason why I chose that. Uh, no really rhyme or reason. Our motors are still going to sit flat on top and you can see that uh, you, you could, I think, go from the reverse these to where you could have some sort of benefit but I think this is really cut out to make sure that your C-clip and your motor stem can rotate freely. I'm guessing that's their design idea there. Uh, you can see that we have a slotted motor hole so that means we can mount different motor holes. Motors uh, we can do with the 110X, we can possibly do the 1306 and the 1407s as well because we have 9 to 12 millimeters there on our motors. Uh, when you put the arms in you do kind of do three at a time and you don't want to necessarily get those really tightened down because they do interlock there in the center well interlock isn't the, the correct term they butt up against each other inside because they have kind of a, a V shape to the arms you can go back and look at that when we looked at the pieces if you wanted to verify that for your own self uh, but then the last arm goes in and it goes in very tightly you can't really see it down here um, but let me use this M2 hex which is all you need to assemble uh, you can see everything right down in here kind of butts up against each other and we only have one screw in each arm at this stage and it's it's quite rigid and stiff so I don't think you're going to get any arm flex with how it's assembled the last arm goes in with a little bit more um, force you do have to thread the screw through the carbon because it is tight enough then at that point and then you get your top nut and these are uh, recess nuts so there's some of the nut below here and it has that that gnarled edge to it to where it will grab a hold of the carbon fibers. You don't have to hold the top nut with a tool in order to get to the screw through it. It will grab onto the carbon fiber itself. I did put all the screws in. I did not use the grommet because traditionally for me, I don't use uh, a lot of VTXs that require a grommet with an SMA connector. I usually use a whip antenna, especially on micros. Uh, this is designed to be a top mounted battery. You can see we've got slots for our battery strap. Arms are three millimeters. Bottom plate is two millimeters. Top plate is probably two millimeters too. The distance that you have to work with on the tail end or the front end is going to be about 22 millimeters. The flight stack base that you have to work with is 16.84 or closer to 17 millimeters. So getting your flight stack if you're using an all-in-one flight stack in there is going to be a challenge because normally you need 20 millimeters. We don't have that in this case. I should also point out that you could take this entire stack, your arms and the top securing plate and put it on the bottom. I don't see any reason why you shouldn't do that. Uh, matter of fact, it might uh, help increase your flight stack and how much space you have to work with in there. If you know of a reason why we shouldn't do that, please leave a comment down below. I'd appreciate to know because again, this is a new design frame for me. I haven't flown something like this before. Here is the uh, Speedix or Spedix IS100 flight stack. I wanted to give you an example. I did not bother to put in the uh, standoffs in between each one because with the pins you get an approximation of what the position will be. It doesn't necessarily make the flight stack smaller or taller and we will have some in the bottom here but I wanted to slot this in so you get some sort of idea of what sort of flight stack you can use. And you can probably see from there while it's tight this particular flight stack with the standoffs that come we can probably get that in without much fuss. We will have to locate our receiver 
probably uh, in the front or the rear of the flight stack somewhere because I don't think when you put the standoffs in there you're going to have quite enough room to get your receiver through and you have your battery up top so even if you tried to put your receiver on top as we traditionally do in micros poking it out here is probably going to be a little bit of a problem because your battery is going to sit on top of it at that point you can also see my antenna in this case is going to be a touch short for getting out this rear hole you can also use zip ties to secure your antenna if you just want to come out the straight out the back uh, a number of people do that so if i were to use this flight stack i would probably need to solder on it another antenna in order to make that work in this particular frame case we also have a slot back here to where you could run your battery lead out back to make sure that it stays uh, in that position and then connects to your battery up top. There's two sets of screws. Some are this length here and those go into your standoffs and then there's four longer ones and those go through your arm stack. The total weight of the frame as I have it built is 46 grams. If you add the grommet you have 46.4 and for good measure with the battery strap 48 almost 49 grams. If you have any questions about this frame this is the Nidacy XF3. It's a three inch micro frame a little bit of an alien or uh, Martian sort of arm layout. If you're interested in this sort of frame, there'll be a link down below. If you'd like to see this frame built out, and I am interested in flying something like this because this is unique to me, uh, leave a comment down below if you would like to see that build and see how it performs in flight. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please leave a comment down below. I appreciate your time, and thanks for watching.